guys welcome back to another animal eye tutorial today I am working on a lovely tiger's eye you can see that I have outlined the drawing here it's a lovely orange um, and green toned eye and the colors fade together really nicely I thought it would be a really nice exercise to do so I used a free reference picture from this from Pixabay and I've included the link to the reference picture in the description below in case you want to try this eye out for yourself. So the first thing that I did when I created this eye is I just outlined the iris and all of the dark parts of the tiger's eye with some dark sepia pencil. I then layered over this with some dark indigo and then I layered back over with some dark sepia and all I did to begin with was just fill in all of the dark parts of the outside of the eye so all of like the tear duct area all of that I just shaded with the dark sepia went over with some dark indigo and then back over with some dark sepia just to give it some depth and really darken it up as much as possible for this eye, I used a few different techniques so I'm actually using some zest it pencil blend and I'm using that to just blend out all of the dark areas to get a really smooth surface. So when I'm using the Zest It Pencil Blend I use a small zero paintbrush and I don't load my paintbrush up too much with the Zest It Blender because I find that it saturates the paper so I make sure that the paintbrush is kind of dry and then I just use the paintbrush in circular motions to blend all of the colours together. Moving on to the iris, I first layer down some raw umber 10% from the luminance and then I follow that with some brown ochre 50% and just layer up the pencil and I use small circular motions to try and fill as much of the tooth of the paper as possible. I then transition this into the green of the eye which is more towards the pupil and for that I use the same base layer and then I layer up some luminance cobalt green on top of that. I just use the pencil very very lightly just using small circular motions just to try and build up and fill as much of the tooth of the paper as possible. Once I've added in the colour of the iris, I then go back to working on the outside of the eye. So I just darken up all the areas around the eye as much as possible. So I try and make the values as true to the reference as possible. I then added all of the fur around the outside of the eye. So just above the eye, the fur is that nice creamy white. And I found that a lot of the colors that I used within the white fur weren't actually white. A lot of the colors were gray. There were some browns. I even added some of the green, which was the same color from the eye. So I used the cobalt green from the luminance in there. I used some walnut brown. I used some blue as well. I used a different combination of pencils for this portrait. I used a combination of the polychromos, the luminance, and I also used some Prismacolors. And I found that all of these pencils worked really well together, especially when I was using the Zest It Pencil Blend. So the only place that I actually used the Zest It Pencil Blend was on the dark parts around the eye, and I used it a small amount when I added further colours with an iris. And again, I just made sure that my paintbrush wasn't loaded too much with the Zest It. It was just slightly wet, kind of dry, and just used the paintbrush in small circular motions to try and blend the colours together nicely. When adding the fur around the outside, I added a few base layers, just shading and going in the direction of the fur, and then I went in and I added individual hairs, and I used different colours for this, as I said. I used some green, I used some blue, and I also added some little orange hairs, but a majority of the colours that I used were the warm grey tones from the Polychromos. watermark within the eye I just layered up some light greys and then I went over with some Delft blue and some mauve from the Polychromos and I also added some violet and violet blue from the Prismacolors as well. I then went over this and blended to make it nice and smooth and then I added some white pencil, some white Prismacolor over the top and then introduced some blue colours so I used the genuine cobalt blue from the Luminance as well as some dark indigo from the Polychromos as well. 
Turning my attention back to the iris, and I added the dark part above the reflection within the eye. So there was like a really dark shadow which was cast just above the highlight, and I added that in just using some greys, so some warm greys from the polychromos. I also built up some burnt umber from the polychromos and some walnut brown to really give it some nice depth. The highlight within the eye was just built up with some blue, so I mainly used uh, the genuine cobalt blue from the Luminance, some dark indigo from the Polychromos, and I also used the light cerulean blue from the Prisma colours. And again, I found that all of these colours worked really well together, and I just built up all the different shapes and tones within the highlight. So I looked at my reference picture, and I tried to see where all of those shapes were, and then added them into my drawing as I saw them on my reference. It's really important to pay close attention to your reference photo when you want to create realistic eyes like this. For the colour within the iris I used some Venetian red terracotta and some sanguine from the polychromos around the outside and I made sure that I added these colours around the very edge where the iris was a lot darker so it's got a nice dark deep orange around there and that's where I added those colours. I also used some orange luminance around the edge there and then I shaded them down with some warm grey 5 and I also added some nougat and some walnut brown over there just to shade it at the very edges so it blends in nicely. The green within the eye I just layered lightly with the cobalt green and I used some true green to add a little bit of depth. There's a little bit of yellow showing through and that's just where I've blended the orange into the green and to do that I used the goldenrod colour from the Prisma colours and I blended from the orange into the green and I also blended the green back into the orange. To add all the different marks around the iris you can see that there's like a dark ring which sits around the middle of the iris and for that I just used some nougat and some walnut brown and just lightly shaded. I used the tiny circular motions that I was using when I was filling in the iris in the first place and just made sure that I blended everything out smoothly. I also used the Zestit pencil blend to blend the wax and the layers down within the iris because I found that I was getting quite a waxy build up where I was using quite a lot of the Prisma colour. So I blended it down with the Zestit pencil blend and then added some more colours over the top so again I blended the orange into the green with a goldenrod and I introduced the greens back over the orange with the cobalt green from the luminance. I went around the eye at the very end and just made sure that everything was dark enough. I shaded over the right hand side of the highlight with some greys and, and I added a little bit of the colour from the iris behind that so I introduced some oranges, I introduced some greens and some blues just so that you could see a hint of the iris behind that reflection. To finish a drawing I just added some more Zestit pencil blend over the top and I made sure that everything was correct and accurate from my reference photo. So I just adjusted the darks, I added a few more hairlines here and there, and I made sure that the highlight was sitting correctly and everything was shaded up and it looked three-dimensional. I was really pleased with the outcome of this eye, especially given that I was using some Prisma colours which I'm not used to. I also ventured back into using the Zestit pencil blend, and of course I'm working on my new paper as well, the Strathmore Bristol Board 500 plate. All of that combined, I think it gave me a really nice effect and I'm really pleased with the outcome of this eye. So that's it for this tutorial guys, hopefully you have enjoyed this one. Next week's one will be of a horse's eye and it will be of similar content as always. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on all of my social media sites. If you have any requests that you'd like to see me draw or demonstrate, pop them in the comments below. I always read the comments and I always take on board anything that anybody wants to see. But I will see you in the next tutorial video guys. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you later. Bye!